Celtic god of wild places and wild animals with a background shrouded in mystery. This deity ruled over the wilderness and is revered by the ancient Celts as a symbol of power and renewal. He is by far one of the most enigmatic and intriguing figures in Celtic mythology and is iconic for the antlers that protrude from his head. Hello and welcome to Pantheon Mythology. Today we'll be exploring the background of the horny one himself, Canunos, pun fully intended. If you too are horny, like yours truly and Canunos, be sure to give that like button a poke. And why not have a go at the subscribe button too, if you're new here, as we release new content every week. Believed to have originated in ancient Gaul, a region that covered much of modern-day France, Belgium and Switzerland that was eventually inhabited by the Celts, Canunos is worshipped as the lord of wild things, including beasts and places. A mediator of man and nature, this horned deity is able to tame predator and prey so they might relax and chill out together, because we all need a bit of chill, after all. He was the embodiment of the Celts' love of nature, their reverence for the land, and their deep spiritual connection to the forces of life and death. In terms of his appearance, Canunos is frequently depicted holding or wearing a talk, a metal necklace that was a hallmark of Celtic culture. In some images, he simply holds a talk, while in others, he is shown sporting one around his neck or antlers. Some experts associate Canunus with oak trees, which held great significance in Celtic tradition and Druidic beliefs. The first depicted images of Canunus were discovered in Val Camonica, a region in northern Italy that was under Celtic control around 400 BCE. It is also thought that Canunus is depicted on the Gunderstrup cauldron, a silver cauldron discovered in Jutland, Denmark, and estimated to be from the 1st century BCE. Despite his prominence, very little information is available about him, as very few written records of him exist. Some researchers speculate that his name and attributes were derived from multiple horned gods merged together. Others propose that his features were borrowed from Greco-Roman gods of a similar appearance. Regardless, it's important to keep in mind that these gods were not necessarily one and the same, but rather arose from a shared cultural background. As the ruler of the uncivilized realm, which is my fancy way of saying forests and woods, animals were his followers, and fruits and vegetables that grew freely were his gifts. Classical images of the god showed him surrounded by animals such as elk, wolves, snakes, and aurochs. These gatherings were made possible by his power to bring even natural predators into peaceful coexistence. This power may have made Canunas a revered protector and provider among rural communities and hunters. Although Canunas is an iconic figure within mythology, he is not alone as the only horny deity as there are others who share similar traits. This leads back to the notion that shamanic cultures use sympathetic magic to appear as the animal whose attributes they wish to take meaning. When they wished to take on the attributes of a deer and elk, they would wear the animal's fur and antlers. That's old school camouflage for you. Pan and Silvanus, for example, were also horned gods in the Greco Roman pantheon. Depicted as goat like, they too held sway over the untamed world. Coincidence? Wotan is a Germanic deity associated with hunting and was known for guiding spirits on hunts. He too had a close connection with animals and their traits. Some also speculate that along with Pan, Canunus may have served as a source of inspiration for the adversaries of the Knights Templar, who created the false deity demon Baphomet. Baphomet had physical characteristics that were reminiscent of both gods, and his name was derived from a Latinized form of Muhammad. Today, Baphomet has become a well-known figure in modern witchcraft and Satanism. I mean, they could pretty much pass as twins. Look at him. Despite the good nature of Mr. C, not all accept him as a symbol of good. The Christian church opposed him alongside other pagan gods because they represented beliefs that were different from those of the Christian faith. The rise of Christianity in Europe was accompanied by a suppression of pagan beliefs and practices, which were seen as competing with and potentially threatening to the spread of Christianity. As a result, many pagan gods and symbols were demonized, 
and Canunus was used as a symbol of the Antichrist. Why can't we all just get along? Canunus is a fascinating figure in Celtic mythology, a god who embodies the values and beliefs of the ancient Celts in a powerful and captivating way. Whether as a symbol of nature, fertility, and renewal, or as a bringer of wealth and prosperity, Canunos remains an enduring and important figure in Celtic lore, and his presence continues to inspire and captivate people to this day. Well, that's it my friends. Now, I'm not a guru by any means when it comes to Celtic mythology, so if I've missed anything or any of you watching are witches or pagans as have experience with Canunos, please do share. If you've enjoyed this video, drop us a like, and if you're still here, check out our Canunos tea on Pantheon Apparel. Our clothing brand features designs inspired by deities and beasts from across the Pantheons. We're rated excellent on Trustpilot and ship worldwide. Check out the link in the description. The video on the left here is one that YouTube thinks you'll love, and this playlist on the right here features every single one of our videos if you fancy a massive binge session. Perfect for a bedtime listen. I've been your host Adam, and thanks for tuning in. See you on the next one.